welcome back to my course aspects of biochemical engineering uh, in the last uh, lecture i try to discuss the uh, kinetics of substrate utilization product formation and biomass production of microbial cells and uh, the process that we considered that is the batch process and also we <coughs> we discuss the monod equation and monod equation is considered as a unstructured and unsegregated model and I, I i try to explain what do you mean by structured model what do you mean by segregated model and uh, obviously that unstructured and unsegregated model is considered as a ideal model it is not a real model real model will be structured and segregated model and uh, then we discuss uh, about that how you monitor the uh, concentration of the cells and I told you two type of cells we have one is called unicellular cell another is uh, what we call filamentous cells or multicellular cells in case of unicellular cell number is proportional to mass so concentration of the cells can be expressed both uh, either by mass per unit volume or number of cell per unit volume in case of unicellular cell. Now, in case of uh, in case of uh, fungi or multicellular cell or filamentous cells, always we shall have to express the concentration of cell which is used for explaining the enzymatic reaction kinetics. And we discuss the what are the limitations uh, of this equation of, uh, that you know I told you that uh, mu is finite when s is finite, mu tends to mu max when s tends to infinity but it does not explain what will happen to mu when s tends to 0 and in addition to that there are two other limitations of this Michaelis Menten equation that it does not discuss the death of the cells because we know any kind of living population always there will be growing of the cells and death of the cells. So, death of the cells is not uh, is considered in case of monod equation and in addition to that there is substrate inhibition and product inhibition as per microbial system is concerned that also uh, we do not consider. And then we discuss about the life cycle of the cells. I told you that life cycle plays very important role because the reason is that uh, in process we come across into the lag phase, log phase, stationary phase and and the death phase. Every phase has a significance as for example, lag phase we consider as the acclimatization phase, log phase is the active phase and stationary phase is the starvation phase. And in case of death, death phase that is you know the organisms are dying phase. So, you know that, so why it is important the reason is that whenever we prepare any kind of inoculum the or you know culture for, for any kind of fermentation process we shall have to inoculate uh, in between the mid log phase to late log phase that is the culture we should prepare. Now, in addition that to that we discuss other different type of growth models that we recommended by different type of scientists and also we, we discuss about the substrate inhibition and product inhibition and also lutecking pirate model and part model. Now, today I am going to discuss that how uh, this in the CSTS system or when CSTS means continuous start tank reactor. When continuous start tank reactor we use in the biological system, we call it chemostat process. So, how in the chemostat process we can we can use the living cells. So, today's lecture will be mostly concentrated on that. Now, if you look at that, uh, this is a continuous process. We we have already, I already told you that we have two type of process. We have uh, one is your CSTR, what we call chemostat, another is the plug flow reactor. Now, chemostat basically, this is simple a reactor. This is like this, and uh, so there is a continuous inflow and outflow. And plug flow reactor is like this that you know there is a tube tubular reactor and liquid coming one end and product is going out both are continuous reactor. Now, here 
we have we have uniformity in the reaction mixture that by using the mechanical starter here there is no starter not only that during the movement there should not be any axial mixing radial mixing is permissible not the axial mixing now press media is continuously introduced into the at a constant rate so we pour, we take it a press media here and culture volume is kept constant in the uh, by continuous removal of the culture now suppose f is the flow rate now, and we here also we shall have to maintain the flow rate f now f suppose this is f and this is f2 and if f1 is more than f2 then what will happen that uh, your volume of the reactor that keep on increasing that is undesirable and if uh, if uh, f1 is less than f2 then volume of the liquid that will keep on decreasing with respect to time so this is the problem now when f1 equal to f2 then and only then the volume of the reactor will remain constant am i right so this is uh, this is the significance of this particular thing then we have a single nutrient control growth we can we, what you call now i told you the media comprises of n number of component we have carbon source we have nitrogen source we have minerals and so we have vitamins am i right so you know that everything has has some contribution to the living system carbon has three contribution it goes for the cell mass formation it goes for the as a source of energy and it goes for the product formation in nitrogen mostly it is used for the growth of the cell minerals and vitamin they mostly contribute for as a cofactor in the in the metabolic pathway uh, the enzymes involved in the metabolic pathway now uh, so if you want to study that what is the effect of this component individually we can easily study with the help of continuous systems just we can change the concentration here here we we change the concentration immediately we can find the changes here the dilution rate that is the rate of addition of phase media determined by the specific growth rate that is d equal to f by v f is the flow rate and v is the because the d is equal to mu i shall show you in the next slide uh, dilution rate because uh, because here i want to point out one thing that uh, when we study our life cycle this is the x this is the cell mass concentration and this is time so we have this kind of that you know life cycle we have now suppose in case of baker's is fermentation process we we are interested to operate it in the in the log this is the log phase am i right because log phase we will get the maximum rate of cell mass formation so so that we can maintain by controlling the dilution rate by d equal to mu that next slide i hope you will get that information now the continuous growth uh, cell growth using the chemostat as substrate continuously added and feed continuously remove a quasi steady state uh, is uh, developed now what i want to want to mean here that uh, in the chemostat process that uh, uh, quasi steady state conditions means it is not exactly steady state it is tends to steady state now suppose i told you you can remember whenever we operate any kind of continuous process first we operate in the batch mode and when your rate of cell mass growth is maximum then we start feeding the uh, media continuously and take out the uh, that uh, you know fermented media uh, continuously so this is like this f is the flow rate is zero is the initial substrate concentration x0 equal to zero when you have sterile feed sterile feed means there is no uh, cell present in the media and p0 means no product present in the media so here you will get this is the f flow rate s is the substrate concentration x and p now this uh, this we can have under steady state condition and steady state condition uh, co2 steady state condition is possible when and only when we operate the system for infinite period of time now how we can do the cell balance now we have the uh, we have the equation that rate of input plus cell generation equal to rate of output accumulation of the cell and cell death 
Now, here under steady state condition that f into x, x 0 is the cell that is input in the system, cell generation is that this is equal to uh, what I can write d x by d t into b, am I right? Now, d x by d t equal to mu into x. So, I can write this is mu into v x. So, this is exactly what we have written here that mu x into v and this is the output f f into x because under steady state condition x is the series to substrate concentration and this is the rate of uh, uh, cell uh, that is the accumulation of the cell. Now, this will be equal to 0 and in under steady state condition and this is the uh, this is the rate of death of the cell. So, quasi steady state conditions um, the rate of accumulation that we should be equal to 0 assuming the death of the cells is negligible and x 0 equal to 0. Now, this above equation I can write that uh, this is so this is equal to 0 and I assume this is also equal to 0. So, the what will happen mu x b uh, equal to f into x. So, x x will cancel am I right. So, we can write this is mu equal to v by f mu equal to v by f means mu equal to d. So, so what I was telling in the last uh, uh, previously that by simple by controlling dilution rate it is possible to maintain a particular phase of growth for infinite period of time. So, this is very very that is that is the advantage of this uh, chemostat process. Now, uh, in co compared to the batch process we can we can refer that in the batch process this was the major drawback. Why? In the batch process you cannot hold a particular phase of growth for infinite period of time, but in the continuous system you can operate a particular phase of growth for infinite period of time. So, you can get maximum amount of cell mass formation. Now, uh, if you if you do the substrate balance, the previously it was cell mass balance. Now, if you do the substrate balance, then again we can write rate of substrate input plus rate of substrate generation, rate of substrate output consumption and accumulation. So, we can write f into x 0 is substrate generation means the uh, substrate cannot be generated in the, the reactor. So, this we can assume to be 0, this is the substrate output, this is the rate of formation, this is the degradation of the substrate, this will be plus and under steady state condition this will be equal to 0. So, we can write f into s 0 into f s s equal to v into d s. Now, <coughs> d s d s by d t what we can write d s by d t we can write d s by d x into this is equal to d x by d t am I right? We can write like this. Now, d x by d s we can write this is 1 by x by s into d x by d t. This is this is what what is written here and and then 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 this is this is what, what has come this is 1 by and d x by d t equal to what? this is mu into x s s. What is this? x s s stands for steady state cell mass concentration. x s s stands for the x s s is the steady state cell mass concentration. So, this equation we can write in this form d into s 0 minus s s equal to 1 by y x s s mu into x 0. So, this is this is how we can we can we can uh, now, we, we can develop the correlation between the steady state substrate concentration and the cell mass steady state cell mass concentration. Now, next is a very important thing is that how this dilution rate affects the steady state condition. So, this uh, let me explain that. Now, let us assume this is uh, this is we have this is the start tank reactor am I right? This is the this is the start tank reactor and, and, and so, substrate is coming this way and product is going this way. So, here f is the flow rate and this liquid volume we can consider as v, v is called the liquid volume what you call walking volume because we assume that reaction take place only in the liquid phase you know it does not take place in the free space. So, this is called walking volume. So, uh, this is also f. So, what we can we can do we can I told you f by d f by v uh, what is the f by v what is the unit this is 
volume per unit time am i right and this is what this is volume so this volume volume will cancel and this will be time inverse this is this is equal to dilution rate this is equal to dilution rate so this is dilution rate you can you can control you can change the dilution rate as you because v is the v is constant so if you want to increase the dilution rate you just increase the the flow rate volumetric flow rate of the liquid then you can change that dilution rate now if you see the correlation between d versus you x ss and sss what is the x ss i told you this is the steady state cell mass concentration and sss is the steady state substrate concentration now this is steady state cell mass concentration and this is actually the steady state substrate concentration this is sss and this is xss so you know that here you can see that uh, at different dilution rate this is d1 this might be zero this is d2 this is d3 this is d4 this is d5 this is d6 but here here what is happening here there is no cell present in the reactor xss is equal to zero i mean right xss is equal to zero what do you call we consider this as a cell washout what do you mean by washout of the cell because there is no cell present in the reactor because the your your total reactor is free from the cells now if there is no cell present in the reactor we what will happen the s0 that is s0 here and here also will be s0 because no cell no reaction take place so this is exactly this point will be s0 so this uh, corresponding point is uh, the this is called d washout d washout at d washout there is no cell present in the reactor now this is the major problem that we have in case of cs that chemostat process now a question question may be raised that why this happens this happens due to the say, two different reasons one i can explain that you know we know the generation time what is generation time generation time is generation time generation time is the time required for cell division cell division time required for cell division this is the time required am i right for cell division so you know the suppose you are passing the cell in the what is 1 by d 1 by d is called hrt what is hrt hrt is called hydraulic retention time am i right so what is hydraulic retention time that means how long you allow your liquid to reside in the reactor how long that you know and why it is important because that is the time of reaction because the time you are allowing uh, the liquid reside in the reactor that is the time of reaction now if your generation time and uh, hydraulic retention time is uh, less than that the generation time what will happen before cell multiplies you are taking out the cell from the reactor so there is no cell present in the reactor another way it can be explained that suppose this is a continuous reactor and you are passing one end like this so if suppose that here rate of growth of the cell dx by dt and rate of cell mass that is going out from this system that is uh, that uh, if if rate of cell that is going out the system is more than rate of growth of the cell then what will happen the cell mass concentration in the reactor keep on decreasing and a time will come when there is no cell present in the reactor am i right so let us see that uh, here what we have written this is uh, that we have already seen this is mu equal to d when uh, when mu equal to d under steady state conditions and the sterile feed 
what is sterile feed? Sterile feed means here x 0 equal to 0, the input there should not be any cell present in the in the feed that is why we call it sterile feed. Then, then and only then mu equal to d, this is equal to this is mono equation we know mu mu max s case. Now, we previously we have done this uh, that uh, you know the substrate balance and in the substrate balance we have this equation. In this equation if we if we put the value of mu this is mu max s k s plus s then we consider this as a chemostat model this considered as a this is called monot chemostat model. The one monot chemostat model is uh, how it is done because we when we have the uh, this substrate balance or cell mass balance and in the substrate balance and cell mass balance and when we put the monot equation then we consider that a monot chemostat model. The same thing we can we, we can we can work out in case of uh, cell mass uh, balance also we can we can we can we can find out that in cell mass balance also we can write the monot chemostat model. Now, let me show you how you can do that. Uh, suppose this is a reactor and this is the input and there is the output. Now, we have this reactor, this is f, this is x 0, this is f into x s s and this is uh, this is also x s s and this is s s s am I right? This is v. So, if you write the cell mass balance under steady state condition, under steady state condition what will happen that the rate of accumulation equal to 0, rate of input is f into x 0 am I right. What is the rate of generation of the cells that will be d x by d t into v and what is the rate of output f into x 0 x not x 0 f into x this is the rate of that uh, and then uh, then we can write this is uh, uh, and rate of accumulation obviously that will be equal to 0. Now, if you divide this uh, both the side by v uh, this is v is there we can divide by v then what will have, have, have this v the f by v equal to d d into x 0 plus what is this mu into x s s what is this v v will cancel and this is will be d into x am I right. Now, this is equal to x into x 0 plus mu equal to mu max s s k s plus s s s into x s s am I right equal to this is s s x s s this is equal to d into x s s. Now, this equation also we call it monot chemostat model monot chemostat model. So, we have we have two monot chemostat model one is with respect to with with respect to uh, with respect to uh, substrate balance another is with respect to cell mass balance now here the interesting thing is that that uh, the steady state so substrate concentration and steady state cell mass concentration we can easily find out now we have this equation am i right now if you look at this equation that is mu equal to d equal to mu max s s s k s plus s s s am I right. So, this is equal to I can write d k s plus d s s s equal to mu max into s s s. So, I can so what I can write s s s equal to d k s equal to mu max minus d. So, we can easily find out the steady state substrate constant. The once we find out steady state substrate concentration, we can find out x value. How we can find out x value? Why we know y x by s equal to x s s minus x 0, this is equal to divided by s by s, s s s. Am I right? So, <coughs> so what we can write? This is x s s is equal to x 0 plus y x by s into s 0 minus s s s. So, if we put the value of s s s here what we have done here we can find out x s s value this we can easily do that. So, this is exactly what we have done here 
you see that you know this is the x equal to a x equal to this so we can easily find out then if we multiply it by a d that is dilution rate then what is d into x and this is d into x is equal to productivity because the already uh, d into x equal to we can write mu into x and this is equal to dx by dt and the dx by dt means gram of cell produced per unit time this is called productivity so so the, this we can write in this form now when you when you, there is a very interesting thing when you plot that uh, d versus d versus d into x d into x means dx by dt am i right rate of cell mass formation and this uh, what is the plot plot is like this now in this plot here what is this this is equal to dx this is maximum am i right so what is dx maximum then at this point we call it dmax so what is dmax dmax means so when the dilution rate at which the rate of rate of cell mass growth cell mass formation is maximum so this is this is what we can we can we can find out now here um, here in this plot if you look at like this so this is dx am i right this is into dx and then d so here i can write d dx by dd this should be equal to zero this is plato am i right so this is exactly we, we uh, if, if you look at here here we have we have this dx equal to y x by s d s 0 this now if we differentiate this with respect to with respect to d d d if we do th then we will be coming across this equation we will come across this equation and uh, for why the dx uh, this is d and d d s 0 this is the equation and if you differentiate d then it will be 1 this is a 0 and if we d d square and this the two term is there so this, this will be equal to this uh, this value and then we put this uh, that uh, d at uh, when mu d stands for d equal tends to d max dd by dx that will be equal to 0 then if you put these conditions we will we'll solve this and we find this equation this equation we find and uh, and finally we will uh, will come across this equation mu equal to mu equal to mu max s k s y plus s so so this is the the what is so this is what is this d max d max is the dilution rate when you will get the maximum amount of rate of cell mass production now what is the pr maximum productivity now i if i ask you what is maximum productivity now uh, the productivity is usually expressed mass per unit volume maximum productivity is when the rate of cell mass formation is maximum so at d max your rate of growth of the cell is maximum now at this at that particular situation uh, that whatever cell mass concentration is there so but we have d max and x s s at that uh, condition if you multiply it by that uh, corresponding steady state cell mass concentration then we will get the maximum cell mass productivity so maximum cell productivity we can easily calculate so this is exactly and from that uh, we can find out the maximum cell mass concentration also x uh, since the this is the uh, d max uh, that is the uh, so we can easily find out that uh, maximum cell mass concentration and uh, this is how we can solve in this form final form will be coming in this i told you this is uh, d into x max uh, or you know this is uh, this is we consider as a d max if you have d max we have x max and if you multiply that and this equation correspond to the maximum maximum uh, cell mass productivity 
the maximum cell productivity can be calculated with the help of this equation. Now, <coughs> that here uh, we, we, we give you some graph, but what I have shown you that uh, this is the d x, this is the x value and this is the substrate concentration, am I right? And this, this correspond to x 0, am I right? So, so what is the x 0? Where at d wash out that uh, s value will be s 0. Then, then what will be the d value at d wash out value? d wash out equal to d mu max into s 0 k s plus s 0. So, um, we, we, we have seen that this is equal to d max, am I right? this is equal to d max and this is the d wash out. Now, when we want to produce more cell, we are interested to operate the system at d max, but you know that industry how we operate the flow rate by controlling the valve. Now, if we increase the valve little bit more, the actually operator they do this work, but when we open little bit more, there is every possibility that d max can meet the d wash out situation. So, this is the this is the major problem that we have with the um, biochemical industry that uh, so, so uh, this problem can be overcome by two ways either you recycle the cell and or you immobilize cell on the solid matrix this is the two I shall come back. Now, if you look at this that correlation between d max d wash out and mu max usually the correlation is like this d max you can see this is d max, d max will be less than d wash out, am I right? But d wash out usually equal to or less than mu max value. This is the, this is the co correlation shift that we have. And uh, if we want to, uh, now we have shown you already how in the batch process we can find out the, uh, the, the you know, value of uh, cell growth kinetics. Now, in case of uh, chemostat also, it is possible to find out the cell growth kinetics if you write this equation in the form of line of a bark plot. Then what we have to have do? We have to plot 1 by d versus 1 by d because all everything is constant. What is this? This equal to y equal to c plus m x. Am I right? So, if you plot one, one is here, one with the, you will be having straight line, the intercept will give you the value 1 by mu max and uh, the slope will give you the k s by mu max. So, whatever mu max value you have, you put it here, so we will get, get the value of k s. So, it is in the, so in the chemostat process, also it is possible to find out the kinetic constant. Now, what are the advantages we have with the chemostat process? that log phase can be operated for infinite period of time. The effect of growth limiting substrate on the cell growth and morphology of the cell can be easily monitored because I told you that cell comprises comprise in number of components. Suppose we want to find out the effect of individual component on the on the particular process that easily we can find it out. Several plant metabolites is usually produced during the transition of phases which can be pro, operate, easily operated in the chemostat. Simple by controlling dilution rate, we can have 2 and 4 that movement of the phases, so we can have more metabolite formation and results obtained are reliable and reproducible. Major disadvantage of the chemostat is the cell washout problem and growth over the long period uh, <clears throat> can cause mutation and contamination. This is the major problem of this process. Now, as I told you that uh, this drawback that you know cell washout that is the drawback can be overcome by two ways. One is called chemostat with cell mass recycling and whole cell immobilization system. This I, I will discuss in my couple of lectures. Thank you very much.